This year's Comic-Con brought us so much to do, so much to see, but the thing we can't stop talking about, that brand new Wonder Woman trailer. So we're breaking it down on today's Nerdist News. Hold on to your armored Themyscira horses, DC Cinematic Universe doubters. The trailer for Wonder Woman has arrived, and it is again great. Comic-Con owned the weekend, so we didn't get to dive too deep into it, but now that we're back, we've watched this thing about 80 bajillion times, and we're ready to break down everything that you may have missed frame by frame. Let's do this! Now the first image we see in the trailer is that iconic Wonder Woman moment. Pilot Steve Trevor crashed on the beach of Themyscira, discovered by the Amazonian princess who's never before seen a man. The dialogue here is immediately sweet, funny, and natural, a big change from the dramatic, dead serious tone of BVS. Check out Steve's German slash Prussian medal here, the Pour la Marite. His whole uniform actually looks pretty German, so we're guessing DC is using his Golden Age origin here, albeit retconned to World War I as opposed to World War II, which would make him an intelligence officer who was likely working undercover. Next, we're in a Senate hall of some kind on Themyscira, where Wonder Woman's mom, Queen Hippolyta, holds court before a few Amazonian warriors. This could be the scene where, like the comics, Hippolyta allows Diana to visit the world of men after Diana manages to win a competition to determine which Amazonian will take Steve back to his home, something Hippolyta was always reluctant to do in the comics. Or it could be the lead up to that battle scene we see on the beaches of Themyscira later on, with Wonder Woman preparing the Amazonians to do battle with the gun-toting army. But based on Diana's costume here, we're guessing it's going to be the former rather than the latter. And so off Diana goes to the front lines of World War I. Here we see her marching alongside with Steve and some civvies, and in the background we catch a glimpse of Ewan Bremner as part of the Wonder Woman squad we saw in Lex Luthor's weird superhero database in BVS. We also see them later on in the trailer getting shot at. So where are they? We're guessing still in Germany as the ballroom scene that follows features a whole bunch of German uniforms and our first glimpse at the movie's villains. As Hippolyta's VO intones that mankind doesn't deserve Diana, we see Danny Houston stand with something hidden behind his back. Is he the rumored Ares currently on Earth to fan the flames of World War I? We're guessing yes, as we see Diana shoot him a death glare from across the room, then start marching towards him, ready to draw her sword from her dress. First up, a nice reminder that we didn't always have to pat people down at parties. And second, how friggin' graceful is Wonder Woman that she was able to make the hilt of her sword work as a functional accessory. And it looks pretty legit. Oh, and who's this charming little lady Scarface? Rocking a period-appropriate facial prosthetic that could not possibly be any scarier, actress Elena Anaya is very likely playing the only facially scarred Wonder Woman villain that we know of, Paula von Gunther. Now, Paula was originally a Nazi spy who became Wonder Woman's first recurring enemy, but she also became horribly scarred trying to save the Amazonian princess from a burning munitions plant after having a change of heart. Since the Wonder Woman movie seems to focus on Diana's ability to inspire and change hearts and minds, Paula would actually be a pretty great addition to the story. That said, however, we're certain during this ballroom scene, she's in league with Ares himself. Now, we've wondered basically since Wonder Woman joined the DCEU which origin they would go with. I mean, she's had a bunch of them. And according to her night boating exchange with Steve Trevor, it sounds a bit like a blend of Golden Age, post-crisis, and New 52. She doesn't consider Zeus her father, but rather claims to have been created by him. So will we see her molded from clay, or will she learn that Hippolyta fibbed a little and actually slept with the Z-Man? Only time will tell. Anyway, time for an action montage. We see Diana getting treated by an Amazonian doctor sometime before her adventures in the realm of men. I wonder if she was always a bit of a troublemaker. I believe she was in the comics. And check out that cool magical swirling liquid on the right side of the frame. Krypton may have gotten the tech and the dragons, but Themyscira has magic with a capital M. We see Diana riding through a forest on horseback, casually tossing her dress from the ballroom. Is this to leave a trail for someone, or is she just chucking dead weight? Also, looks like this forest scene happens right after the ball. Is she chasing Ares, or did she cause a scene by sword fighting him in the middle of the gala? Later in the trailer, we also see Steve Trevor riding a motorcycle through a forest. Is he following the trail of Diana's party accoutrement? We see a huge battle between a battalion of German soldiers and an Amazonian army led by Robin Wright's General Antiope, and holy crap! Is Antiope the most badass character in this movie, or what? 
We see her leap high into the air backwards while firing her bow. We see her then stab a dude on the ground with three arrows at once and check out all of that horse armor. This lady is such a boss that she actually shelled out hard for history's most useless DLC. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've wondered how Wonder Woman's shield-based period combat would differentiate itself from Captain America's, I have two words for you guys. Trench fights. The trenches of World War I create a totally unique texture for superheroic battle, as evidenced by the crazy combat we see here. While most soldiers dive in terror over the edge of their trench, knowing that they'll full well be cut quickly down by a machine gun, Diana confidently steps out and starts deflecting mortar and bullets alike. Inspiring, heroic, and most of all, extremely cool looking. Yeah. And speaking of which, the Golden Lasso of Truth, standing out bright and shiny against gray, war-torn Europe, the lasso looks amazing. I have a few minor issues with it, a little too bright, but whatever. And Gal Gadot looks amazing using it, that I completely agree with. So rad that it's now also a combat weapon too, getting flung around like Indiana Jones' whip, again. Totally agree. Which is appropriate for the next exchange of dialogue in which Steve throws out that classic action hero line, I can't let you do this. And Diana reminds him that, Yo dude, it's not up to you what I do. Oh, Wonder Woman rules so hard. But Steve gets his moment to check him out as he slides under a plane on this German airbase. Note the lettering on the plane, the FOK E3 is definitely part of the German air fleet because we looked it up on Wikipedia and everyone knows Wikipedia doesn't lie. And then later he shoots up some bad Germans in the same base. Now, based on his uniform, it seems like this scene will take place before he ends up on the shores of Themyscira, most likely getting shot down while trying to escape. It's good to see that he can hold his own because otherwise it would be pretty damn hard to buy Wonder Woman having any romantic interest with him at all. <laughs> Now the trailer wraps up with some speed rampy action connecting this film visually to Zack Snyder's work in the DCU so far and best of all shows Wonder Woman just shattering the f out of a rifle with her back. Damn. And then there you have it. We go to our Wonder Woman logo with her BVS theme, which actually feels kind of pretty anachronistic now, but whatever. And then one more short funny scene with Steve Trevor's secretary, Etta Candy, a semi-sidekick from her early days, to remind us this movie's gonna stay true to her comic book roots. Our only remaining question is, how will this story of hope, which we'd think would end with Wonder Woman victorious, lead to the heroine abandoning the affairs of men for a century? And if she does choose not to get involved, why is she still hanging out on Earth by the time Batman and Superman collide? Will she get exiled from Themyscira for bringing that battle to its shores? Let's just hope that BVS hasn't backed this movie into too much of a downer ending. But what do you guys think? Did you love the Wonder Woman trailer? I did. Did we miss any cool details? Possibly. Let's discuss. And if you missed any of our San Diego Comic-Con coverage, go back and watch it. Check out our full analysis of the DC and Marvel panels and will the Joker wear the Batsuit in the Suicide Squad? We've got a theory about why he just might. Find all that and more over at Nerdist.com.